It's the mid-1970s in California. It's a loud, garish, offensive decade. I loved it, or at least it's offensive to many people now, the way social mores and things were then. The 70s was like this shirt, over-coloured, unsubtle, excessive, not ironed. But that's the whole point. And there was a book from that period, this book, which nobody would publish, which was years ahead of its time, which was praised by Philip K. Dick. It's a book which even now is almost forgotten. I don't think it's in print anywhere in the world. Maybe there's an e-book, maybe there's not. We're talking about Dr. Adder by K.W. Jeter and your life will never ever be the same. Hi, this is Steve Neander, who's Outlaw Bookseller, and today on 100 Must Read Science Fiction Novels, we're taking a slightly different tack. We're not going to do a sort of static shot of the book and stuff, maybe later on, because um, I'm going to do a reading from the book about it. But I'm going to tell you about Dr. Adder. This is um, the Blue Jay Limited Edition, and oh, it's quite handsome, actually. Um, decorated end papers there with a um, unclothed lady. We won't go into that too much and um, it's signed and numbered by KW. As you can see, I'm shooting in natural light. I'm tired. Um, it's a glorious day here. And, you know, it's illustrated, which is pointless. But this is Dr. Adder. Try and pick up any copy you can by any means necessary. Um, borrow it from a friend. Don't steal it because that's not nice and that's illegal. So why is this book so important and why have you never heard of it? Well, Dr. Adder was published in the UK by, um, Granada, by Granada or Grafton, I can't remember which, as it's a rather a punk approach we're taking today in this strand. And um, it had a quotation on the cover from Review, which said, has the brain burned intensity of its mentor, Philip K. Dick. Okay, here's my original copy in a format of Dr. Adder. These are like hen's teeth these days. I think I only had one printing. And this dates back to, let's have a look at the printing history. Um, Grafton UK paperback original 1987. Blue Jay 1984 was the hardcover. There it is, Grafton, beautiful. And I'd heard about this and I'd wanted it for some time. Some time. And it has an afterword by Philip K. Dick. And Dick said, a masterpiece, truly wonderful novel. And <laughs> it's just, you know, it just astonishes me that not more is made of this book. And it's very much, if you know it, you know, your life will never be the same if you don't know it. There are two types of people in the world, that cliche. The people who've read Dr. Adder and the people who haven't. So please try and find a copy. Anyway, why is it so important? Well, it was written back in 1972. And this is more punk than anything in cyberpunk. I can tell you that now. And there's an afterword in this edition by PKD. And he, he talks about how um, a creative writing lecturer comes to him and say, one of my students has read this, written this book and I think it's good and gave it uh, the manuscript to Dick to read. And he thought, oh God, no, not another book that is going to be awful. But, you know, he absolutely loved it. And he said, I must admit, I considered reading this, manus this manuscript in imposition until I read the first third of it. And having re read that first third of Dr. Adder, my life was permanently changed. Here was not just a good novel, here was a great novel. It picked up with the dazzling power of Dangerous Visions, the Harlan Ellison anthology, left off. Very simply, it is a stunning novel and it destroys once and for all your conceptions of the limitations of science fiction. You know, and that's what you want from science fiction. You don't want it to have the limitations. And the trouble is nobody would publish this. Dick tried for years and years and years to get people to publish it. Nobody would publish it. KW was unpublished generally. 
and um, you know it's quite something and the reason why it went unpublished was because it was a dirty book and just to give you a flavour of the uncompromising nature of Dr Adder and it is strictly for adults um, before you know once you turn over the, the, the full title page there's an epigraph which is an excerpt from a letter to Penthouse magazine which was a top shelf magazine a stroke book um, a pornographic magazine um, and this letter was apparently was in Penthouse in November 1972 and you know now you could say that it was arguing for the inclusion of minorities but it's definitely exploitive and the letter read I would like to add my vote in favour of showing female amputees in your magazine one-armed and especially one-legged females offer a unique excitement and a pictorial featuring attractive girl amputees would certainly be welcomed by a large number of readers really um well you know different strokes different folks and all sorts of strangeness but that's how dr Adder begins so it lays out his store so this is post william burroughs this is post new wave when the american sf literary sensibility is realizing that it has to step up and there are young hip young gunslingers coming along they're going to shake things up this jeter later this sterling gibson other people as well and um it's really hard to describe dr adder so instead i'm going to do a reading as you'd expect from 100 must read science fiction novels kw jeter born 1950 usa Dr. Adder, 1984, written 1972. Hard-boiled former boy soldier E. Allen Limit manages the mutated staff of the company brothel at the Phoenix Egg Ranch, a battery hen factory populated by giant genetically engineered fowl whose intelligence matches their huge body size. Quitting this unedifying position, Limit heads for LA, bearing a briefcase containing a flash glove, an outlawed CIA execution weapon, which he aims to sell to the infamous outlaw cosmetic surgeon Dr. Adder. Sharp-faced, amoral and motorcycle riding, Adder specialises in modifying the bodies of the aspiring hookers who hold the interface, LA's notorious vice and drugs district. The harrowing operations they undergo are bankrolled by rich punters with chilling sexual preferences for amputees and genital augmentation. The interface is patrolled by the fanatical followers of Dr. Adder's nemesis, televangelist John Mox, whose Church of the Moral Forces seeks to eradicate the degradation prevalent in the era by any means necessary, including extreme violence. Delighted with the flash gov, Adder employs the bemused limit as his new surgical assistant. After a confrontation with the moral forces of John Knox, Adder is forced to flee the interface, electing to have a forearm removed and replaced with the flash glove. Now activated, the device makes Adder even more lethal and unpredictable than his enemies ever thought possible. I'll break off here and say that Dr. Adder's really well um, realised. He um, always uses a certain epithet, which I won't sort of mention here, some creative swearing, and he's very funny. And, you know, he does make you flinch as well with the sort of uncompromising way that um, the sort of machinations of Adder with his operations and his plans are described by Jeter. And I went on to say this, Dr. Adder is one of the strangest books in the history of SF and one strictly for adults only. Written in the early 70s, the book's intensity and tight contemporary style prefigure cyberpunk by 10 years while surpassing it in its sheer attitude. No publisher would touch it until 1984, shocked by the uncompromising sexual elements, despite protestations from Philip K. Dick that it was a work of genius. Alongside contemporaries Tim Powers and James Blaylock, Jeter enjoyed the friendship of Dick and has furthered the tradition of surreal Californian SF that the latter championed. Besides his other SF, Jeter has also worked extensively in horror fiction. Dr. Adder is guaranteed to amaze even the most jaded SF fan and reward any adventurous readers who tackle this radical and brilliant book. I still think that stands. Dr. Adder is, you know, very, very much William S. Burroughsian SF of the type that we see way too little of. It's not written to be shocking for its own sake. It does have serious messages about the way technology is going, about the interface between the mind, the body, sexuality, technology, rather like Kronberg. So it precedes Kronberg in lots of ways. So that's Dr. Adder. And in my very first piece of published writing about SF, which was just copy for a book selling catalogue, 
um, I described Dr. Adder as outstandingly weird. Since then, I've read a lot of weird things. I've read some weird things before. I've read a lot of weirder things, arguably. But Dr. Adder really did stand out. And I don't think it performed that well on the UK market because it never got um, reprinted. But the I was running, by 1990, I was running a mail order operation, a forerunner of the internet, you know, getting orders by fax machine, by telephone and by letter, those antiquated methods of communication and um, sending books worldwide and I had a team of 10 people and we, and we did lots of business. And um, we used to sell um, Dr. Adder a lot because it was in our catalog, a catalog which I partially wrote. And I'm always convinced that it's sold on the fact that I described it as outstandingly weird. And I hope that's gonna get you to go out and buy it now. Um, there were two sequels, a thematic trilogy. There was The Glass Hammer, which is this one here, which is also pretty tough. Um, I'm not going to go into any more detail about it. It is quite different in lots of ways, Dr. Adder. It's arguably less confrontational, but KW had moved on as a writer then. It's a different material. And um, there's also a third volume of the trilogy called Death Arms, which was published in Bath by my good friend Les Escott of Morrigan Books. I'll just show you a copy of that. Elsewhere on the channel, there's a whole video dedicated to Morrigan Books. And Les is a great friend of mine, has been since the 80s. And this is a... Um, first hardcover of Death Arms, which was published as a limited edition. And this was the first book that Les published. He'd worked with Kerasina before that, another great UK small press. He'd done wonderful books by people like Keith Roberts, um, DG Compton, Brian Aldiss, and um, you know many others. And this is the trade edition, but this is signed. Um, and Les gave me this for briefly running his stall at the Worldcon, and I did a little bit of book selling there. And this dates to '87, and there was a signed sort of numbered limited edition. And um, in here, read is Les has written a little little message to me, which says, "My first venture into soul publishing. Little did I know." <laughs> Oh, there you go. Hi, Les. I hope you're watching. He's moved from the area now, so I, I don't see him, unfortunately. But the interesting thing, K.W. Jeter actually lived in Bath, and he was living in Bath in the early 80s. And I think he left Bath at the time I was there. He actually um, stayed with my mate Les, and that's how they got to know each other. And Les was already a fan, is a very, very sort of respected collector and SF reader. And while K.W. was there, he coined the term steampunk. And I probably mentioned this elsewhere on the channel. Because KW had written a book back in about 76 called Morlock Knight, which is a sequel to The Time Machine. And he'd sort of got a bit fed up with people going on and on about cyberpunk in Locus, the SF newspaper and fanzines and what have you. And he wrote the letter to Locus saying, right, well, you know, cyberpunk's all very well and good, but I'm the king of steampunk. Um, you know, I invented steampunk. Um, back with Morlock Knight and then the word got appropriated and it went from there because the original steampunk writers were James Blaylock, Tim Powers um, and you know and, and Jeter and um, Powers, um, Powers obviously is quite famous, James Blaylock less so and Blaylock was also published by Morrigan as well. If you watch my Morrigan video there's more about this, tells you more about it. So steampunk comes from Bath so there you go, fire an American. So you know American with an amazing huge heritage. So if you haven't read Jeter do try and get hold of um, of Dr. Adder because it is a fantastic read. It doesn't pull any punches. I absolutely love it. Um, and it's really uncompromising. It's funny and the writing is super glittering, hard and abrasive. Wonderful stuff. It really is. So I do hope you can get hold of that. Um, most critics say that Jeter is probably at his best as a horror writer and I'd say I probably agree with that. Um, you know, his horror novels are just phenomenal. At some point I'm doing a video just dedicated to him because I think he's a great writer. So, you know, try and get Dr. Adder and read it. It'll take your head off in a good way. Um, and this is Outlaw Bookseller with an, an iron shirt signing out for now. Bye.